What is self-worth? Growing up inside of a cult, I heard all the time that the idea of thinking you have any kind of intrinsic self-worth, well, that was from the devil. We were trained to think we were less than. Supposedly, that made us more humble. Well, in reality, this created complexes that have taken me years to unravel. Because I saw myself less than, I was often angry, mean, I lashed out. And I didn't have an anchor. I didn't believe in myself. How could anyone else believe in me? Well, now I have a little daughter, and I have vowed to never raise her saying these words to her. Instead, I tell her on a regular basis, you are smart, you are amazing, you are good. Because words mean something. Call someone less than or build up their self-worth, that's what they become. Words matter, and sometimes we are our own worst enemy. It's the words we hear echoed in our own head that tell us to negate our self-worth. Here's what I've learned. In the end, your self-worth isn't tied to anyone, but you and your creator. Let the lies go. I am a free person. I can rise above my circumstances. I can rise above the low worth other people might place on me. I am made in the image of my creator. I have a talent and I can learn how to use that. Put in the work, the investment, follow the call and act on my passion. Believe those words. Because I'm here today realizing that finding yourself worthy, well, it's a good thing. No, this doesn't mean it's okay to trip on your own ego. This doesn't mean you're better than the rest, but it does mean you realize your value before anyone else does. You don't discount your worth for anyone, anytime. You stand strong in who you are. And you treat others with that same respect too. You don't ask to bargain or discount from them when you buy from them. How you treat others is a reflection of how you treat yourself. The best thing I heard was from my pastor, Bill Munch. When you know whose you are, you know who you are. God made me. He is infinitely wiser, smarter, and more capable than me. Knowing in whose image I am made and who I can rest in gives me the greatest sense of peace. So if you're constantly in a place of devaluing yourself, listening to toxic voices, how can you break free of that and celebrate your self-worth? What are some practical, tangible ways? Well, here are five things I've learned from spending the last nine years healing from over two decades in my father's toxic cult. Number one, realize your worth doesn't come from others, nor should it be measured by them. This is also said, give no take no so yes, that advice applies here. Let those toxic words roll off of you like water off a duck's back. Learn to give no ass. This is your life, this is you. And once you realize and celebrate your intrinsic worth, it really doesn't matter what anyone else says. Your worth doesn't come from what they say. It comes from you being you. So if someone is well-meaning, but speaks advice into your life that just isn't right, isn't something you can act on, I try to decline that very politely. I will tell a well-meaning friend, well, thanks for sharing that, but I'm gonna go with my gut on this one. You know, I've had people tell me not to buy that house, not to take that opportunity. And as much as we're still friends and I still love them, I tell them plainly, I have to go with my gut. I cannot take your advice, but thank you. What about when someone speaks very toxic words into your life? That becomes more their problem than yours. In fact, I recommend you step away from toxic people. You do not reply, you don't blurt out a response, you don't type that email. You can write it, draft it, but do not hit send. Trust me, it is not worth your time and effort. 
to even deal with toxic people. Just walk away. You are worth more than that fight. Number two, embrace and learn from failure, but don't attach that failure to your self-worth. In life, you will fail. It's one of the only guarantees we get in life. But especially for people that value their accomplishments in life, it's important to separate your self-worth from that failure. You are of value. You have self-worth intrinsically with or without your accomplishments. The best thing you can do is to live in the present, not in the past and looking ahead to the future. So don't demean, belittle, or beat your own self up. Sometimes we are our worst enemies. So learn and move on from failure, do better, but do not live beating yourself up. You're worth more than that. Number three, never turn away from an opportunity to develop yourself. The opposite of this would be getting too comfortable, living in stagnation. Remember, your self-worth shouldn't come from what you do, it should come from you inherently being you but the biggest weapon to further self-worth is self-growth. I can tell you this because I spent a year of my life in healing from all the toxicity in my father's cult. I basically had to learn how to deprogram my brain, how to unthink some of the theories and the lessons he had taught me to think, some of the biases, the stereotypes he had tried to teach me to think about other people. I've invested in my self-growth personally and in business. And I can tell you, there's no greater feeling than realizing you put in the work to heal and grow. So heal, go get that counselor, that therapist, go get that coach, grow your talents, grow your skills, grow your income. The feeling of accomplishment is incredible. Number four, rejoice in your uniqueness. What makes you special? This could be the trait others call weird, quirky, or odd. This is what you should celebrate. Put it out there front and center. Make it what you talk about on Instagram. Weave it into the headline of your homepage. What makes you unique is your differentiation factor. And when you start to put your true unique self out there, going back to that first piece of advice, give no be yourself. Guess what? Your tribe finds you and it's an amazing thing. Last but not least, maybe one of the most important points, number five, follow your dreams. Not acting on your dreams can lead to such an unfulfilled feeling in life. This can be connected to depression, not wanting to get out of bed, not feeling adequate. When you walk in your passion, let me tell you, you wake up excited for your day. And if you don't know how to uncover your passion, well, good news, I have a book called Skip the Degree and in chapter three, called How to Build a Real Skill Set, I help you and teach you how to uncover your passion. And this is a book for all ages. You can get it on Amazon in all formats, including Audible. Once you discover or uncover your passionate purpose, the thing that makes you fulfilled in life and is based on your passion, life is amazing. And I think one of the hardest things would be not to celebrate your self-worth. Giving your talents back to the world is an amazing way to give back. I hope this video helped, inspired, and guided you in any way. If it did, hit that like button, comment, tell me what you liked the most or what you learned, or maybe you have questions, follow-up questions from this video. Tell me in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button because I'll be doing videos like this more often. I love sharing inspiring practical advice with you, and I hope to see you back here.